and welcome to ISTV News. I'm Surbala Kangabam. Let's look at the top stories. Websites of most government departments not updated. Websites unable to provide benefits to public. And now the news in detail. As there has not been even an inch of space on earth that has not been covered by the modern information technology, the state government too has adopted the technology to a large extent. Even as the world has gone modern with the internet technology years ago, government of Manipur too started using internet in most of its departments a few years ago. Thus, websites were opened in most of the government departments so that the people of not only Manipur but also of the whole country and the world would be able to know what the government of Manipur has been doing and going to do for the people. It was aimed that people across the state, the country and for that matter, the world would be able to learn about the activities of the departments, the educational institutions and so on. The websites were also aimed at providing information to the people about the top responsible officials of the government departments. This used to be announced at every public platform by the leaders of the government. However, once the websites were opened, the official concern seemed to have forgotten to update the websites from time to time. As most of the websites have not been updated for a very long time, there seems to be no use in keeping the websites open. Even after the heads of certain departments had gone on retirement after reaching superannuations long back, their names are still given as the heads of the departments concerned. When people want to seek in certain information of certain departments, as the websites have not been updated for long, they cannot get any help from the websites. Questions from different sections of the people have arisen as to whether those officials who are supposed to provide information to the public are only enjoying their fat salary while forgetting their duties. On the other hand, it has also been found that emails, letters or queries etc. sent by certain companies from outside the state regarding their desire for working in Manipur are lying unattended and unanswered by the, as the responsible heads of the departments concerned had retired from service quite some time back. Under these circumstances, the present heads of the departments are required to pay attention to their respective websites to update them and provide relevant information and give reply to the queries from outside for the betterment of the government, the state and the people, sections of the people appealed. The annual sport meet of Manipur Student Association Delhi is underway at the police ground Delhi. The sports meet commences from March 6 and will continue till March 12. Students from Manipur are taking part in football, cricket, athletics, chess and other events. In the football tournament, 22 teams are participating and 13 teams are participating in cricket which began today. Three Assam Rifles personnel have been reportedly injured in a series of bomb attacks by some unknown persons. The incident occurred at Haukchong village under Noni police stations this morning. According to reports received by ISTV News, the personnel of eight Assam Rifles were on their routine patrolling at Haukchong village when a series of IEDs exploded on the way and were fired upon. Three Assam Rifles personnel were reportedly injured in the incident. The injured personnel are Rifleman Uza, 27, Rifleman Chiramani Jamasia, 32, and Rifleman Rajib Kumar, 29. All three sustained bullet injuries in their legs. Manipur Democratic People's Front has expressed grief over the sudden demise of Comrade P.H. Parijal. Manipur State Power Distribution Company Limited has been working hard to avail prepaid services to the people. But the number of illegal power connection in the Greater Imphal has not come down yet. Though many people have legal connections, there are many other illegal consumers. The authority concerned has not taken any actions on the legal consumers. On the other hand, power company has increased the duration of power supply to the consumers, but the number of regular bills 
paying consumers remains still low. Sources told the ISTB News that 20 crore rupees is being spent monthly to buy electricity from other states. But not more than 7 crore rupees can be collected in the form of bill per month. If the trend continues, the recently incarnated power company may not last long, observers feel. And moving on to some national and international news. Five days after the public lynching of Said Farid Khan, over 40 people have been arrested by the police. Nagaland government submitted a report to the Home Ministry in which the police claimed that they tried to rescue the victim but were overwhelmed by the mob. Police showed restaurant as women and children were in crowd. By the time more forces came in, the accused was dead, the report said. The Naga leaders took on Tarun Gogoi for expressing doubts on the rape charges. They allege that Gogoi is trying to derive political millage from this incident ahead of the impending polls in Assam. The incident is talking fear among the non Nagas and the victim's relatives has complained of a lack of security for outsiders in the state. The authorities are not taking any stances and are closely watching the situation so as to ensure that the crisis does not escalate. As the controversial land acquisition bill will be taken up for voting in the Lok Sabha on Tuesday, the Narendra Modi government is likely to move nine amendments to garner opposition's support, says sources. The government moves amendment deleting social infrastructure projects from the exempted categories and to restrict acquisition of land within one kilometer of both sides of railway tracks and highways, sources say. According to sources, the government the government also move amendment for state creating land banks of backend lands for acquisition for development projects. The amendment includes for hassle-free mechanism for redressal of grievances of land loser and proposes mandatory employment for even farm laborers on account of land acquisition. The government also moved amendment to do away with moving the High Court for appeals against land acquisition and to allow people to approach authority within the district first for addressing eight sources. Toughening its then, Congress on Monday decided that it will vote against the bill unless it is sent to the Parliamentary Standing Committee or presented in the original form as passed in 2013. Press Council Chairman Justice Markande Kadzu has sparked another role by describing Mahatma Gandhi as a British agent in his latest blog post. He said, Gandhi did great harm to India by injecting religion into politics. By constantly injecting religion into politics continuously for several decades, Gandhi furthered the British policy of divide and rule. Kadzu said in his blog. He also said that Gandhi's economic ideas were thoroughly reactionary. He advocated self-sufficient village communities, though everybody knows that these communities were totally castious and in the grip of landlords and money lenders. Gandhi was against industrialization and preached hand spinning by Chakra and other such reactionary nonsense. Similarly, his trusteeship theory was all nonsense and an act of deceiving the people. Three days after the Jammu and Kashmir government released hotliner Masharat Alam from jail, Chief Minister Mufti Mohammad Said assured Union Home Minister Rajnath Singh that no more spiritists will be released without consulting the Bharatiya Janata Party BJP. According to sources, Singh spoke with the JNK Chief Minister over phone over Alam's release. The Home Minister sought some more clarification on the release of the separatists on Saturday. During their conversation, Said is known to have assured the Home Minister that no more separatist leader will release from the prison. The assurance by Mufti should come up as a major relief for the Modi government at the centre and as the JNK Chief Minister was preparing to assure the release of 15 other separatists, including Aship Hussain Faktu, who is lodged in Srinagar jail for the past 22 years, making him the longest serving prisoner in the valley. The rift in the Aam Atmi Party, AAP, is widening with the party now accusing senior leaders Yogendra Yadav, Prasant Bhushan and Santi Bhushan of working towards party defeat in the recent Delhi Assembly election. During Delhi elections, three senior AAP leaders were working towards our defeat Yogendra Yadav, Santi Bhushan 
and Pasant Bhushan, AAP said in a statement. Earlier, in the National Executive Meeting held on March 4, Yogendra Yadav and Prashant Bhushan were sunted out of the party's political affair committee. Prashant Bhushan and Shanti Bhushan supported the claims made by AVAM against AAP. Yogendra Yadav was planting stories against Kejuwal and AAP in National Dailies was speaking against party of the records to journalists. AAP said, We have decided to expose Yadav and Bhushan to the entire world, the statement aided. BJP Agra's unit on Monday dismissed its local media in charge, Rajkumar Pathik, for posting an anti Modi poem on Facebook, criticizing the party's support to Mufti Mohammad Said and his party, PDP's act in Kashmir. Pathik, in his post, had likened Modi's support to PDP as feeding milk to a snake and has said that the snake will only produce poison and bite Modi as soon as it gets chance. While the poem was widely likened by both the Congress party members as well as the Hindu organizations, Pathik was dismissed from the, his portfolio on Monday morning by the party's city president, Nagendra, Nagendra Dubey Gama. Gama claimed that the post had used very strong language against the Prime Minister and Mufti Said and he was removed to maintain discipline in the party cadres. He said, an inquiry has been set up against Patik inside the party's city unit. Meanwhile, Patik claimed that he had not said anything wrong and was willing to face any prop. He said the Prime Minister himself has endorsed his views in his Monday speech in Parliament and by criticizing the PDP government, he had only voiced the concerns of the entire country towards this unlikely coalition of a nationalist and a separatist party. And before we close off, the top stories once again. Websites of most government departments not updated. Websites unable to provide benefits to public. Well, thank you so much for joining with us and stay tuned for more news.